Imagine a world where all your personal information is stored on a digital identity card. This card would not only have your name and date of birth, but also your credit history, online behavior, and vaccine status. This is the future that the World Economic Forum WEF, is envisioning with its new report on vaccine passports. How will it affect our daily lives? And what does Elon think about this? Let's find out in today's video. We may soon live in a world where our every move is tracked and monitored by a digital identity card, and all our online transactions will be judged by a third-party organization. While in concept, vaccine passports sound great, a way to help people get back to their lives after months of lockdown, the WEF's reports raises some serious concerns about the privacy and security of these digital identity schemes. These are already being trialed by several countries and airlines, and the WEF is urging businesses and governments to adopt them on a global scale. But the report warns that these passports could become a new norm, and urges businesses and governments to be transparent about how the data collected on these passports will be used. The WEF is also calling for the creation of an international body that would oversee the use of vaccine passports, and set standards for how the data collected on these passports should be used. However, let's not forget that we've already seen the real-world effect of these passports on a global scale. As a matter of fact, these passports have done nothing in preventing the spread of the virus. The vaccines aren't proven to stop the spread of COVID-19 because people are still getting infected even after having multiple doses of the vaccine. World Health Organization says that the vaccine passports may increase the risk of disease spread for this very reason. But why are the unelected globalists at the WEF pushing for these passports? There are a few reasons. First, they want to get the global economy back on track, and they believe that these passports will help to do that. Second, they see these passports as a way to increase control and surveillance over the population. And finally, they believe that these passports will help to achieve their goal of a one world government. So while the WEF is pushing for these passports to be adopted on a global scale, we need to be very careful about how we allow these digital identity schemes to be used. People all around the world have begun to rebel against their government's authoritarian rules and restrictions that have nothing to do with public health and everything to do with control. It doesn't need an expert to see that COVID passport mandates are fueling authoritarian social credit systems and digital identity schemes. This will determine your level of access to goods and services based on your online and offline behavior. While it may sound like a good idea in theory, the implementation of these passports will have a chilling effect on our civil liberties and privacy rights. And it's already happening in another country. In China, the government has been using a social credit system to track and judge its citizens based on their behavior. This system is being used to deny people access to jobs, loans, travel, and even social media. What we're currently using traditional credit scoring for is bad enough. We don't need another credit system that can be used to track and monitor our every move. What we're currently using now is the traditional credit scoring system, which relies on limited sources for insights into your financial behavior. Meanwhile, alternate crediting sources include your social behavior to your overall score. It includes your social media activities, online engagement, geolocation data from your smartphone, PC browsing histories, and phone records. While advocates praise alternative credit scoring as being more inclusive, others fear that it could be an entryway into a Chinese Communist Party-style social crediting system, where access to goods and services is based on a person's social behavior. Nizan Geslevich Pakin addressed the dangers of merging financial and social data. These risks include social segregation, decreased social mobility, privacy harms, potential lending discrimination, a Yelp-style ranking culture. A Yelp-style ranking culture already exists under the CCP, but the consequences are far worse for citizens with bad reviews. There are over 30 million citizens in China who are banned from ever leaving the country, whether by train or plane, having insurance, renting a home, going to restaurants, and even taking out a loan because they have a low social credit store. Despite the risk of authoritarian abuse, social credit does have its benefits. Professor Packin co-authored a study with her college professor, Yafet Lev Oretz. In the study, they wrote, Social credit is arguably a highly efficient and accurate innovative tool that can be used in various ways and formats to expand access to credit to populations 
which otherwise might be creditless or underserved for various reasons under the current credit system. A WEF report in 2018 states that our identity is literally who we are, and as the digital technologies of the fourth industrial revolution advance, our identity is increasingly digital. This digital identity determines what products, services, and information we can access, or conversely, what's closed off to us. Financial services make up just one component of a whole host of social activities, records, and credentials that make up a person's digital identity. Unsurprisingly, the industry stakeholders like alternative credit scoring because it shows the promise of being highly accurate. It helps these stakeholders prevent risks in money lending while finding trovers of potential borrowers. What's important to remember is that these digital identity schemes are being developed by the private sector, not the government, which means that there are very few regulations in place to protect our privacy. In other words, people who'd like to take out a loan will have a difficult time. This is not necessarily because these individuals are irresponsible with handling money, but more because of their personality types, social interactions, and online behavior. Digital ID schemes, according to the WEF report, include the following. Profile may include inherent data attributes such as biometrics or assigned attributes such as name or national identifier numbers. History credit or medical histories, online purchasing behaviors. Inferences Judgments or decisions made based on the authentication processes, profiles, and histories, for example, a bank that decides the attractiveness of an individual for a loan. If you still think that it's impossible for vaccine passports to turn into a digital identity scheme, then take a look at this. The Illinois Department of Public Health started enlisting alternative credit data, expert Experian, to confirm users' identities for its Vax Verify portal. So why would a crediting agency work with the government on proof of vaccination? Well, you got the answer right, we're heading towards a social credit system. The objective is to connect humans with technology through devices that may be worn, consumed, or inserted using the Internet of Bodies. RAND Corporation Report 2020 states that the Internet of Bodies might trigger breakthroughs in medical knowledge or it might enable the surveillance state of unprecedented intrusion and consequence. The report also states that increased IOB adoption might also increase global geopolitical risks, because surveillance states can use IOB data to enforce authoritarian regimes. So what does Elon Musk have to do with this? Elon Musk's Neuralink is one of the many companies that are creating devices to be embedded in human brains. The ultimate goal of these devices is to merge human brains with artificial intelligence. This would allow humans to have superhuman abilities and would give them the ability to connect to the internet using their thoughts. However, this would mean that the government or any other entity that has access to this technology would be able to track our every move, thought, and emotion. Elon's company Neuralink may just give WEF's Great Reset agenda a leg up in keeping the entire population under control. But then again, Elon's intentions are completely different from the WEF group. Unlike the members of the forum, Musk has repeatedly stated that he wants to use his technology to help humans, not control them. What's more, he values free speech and privacy for every individual. Elon Musk has always been skeptical about the government's motives, especially with how they've handled the pandemic. Elon said that the mandates for the masses are an erosion of freedom. The world is slowly becoming an episode of Black Mirror, and the public masses may not have a say in it. It's up to us to be aware of the intentions of these digital identity schemes and what they could turn into in the future. What about you? Are you pro or against digital identity cards? Let us know in the comments. If this video gave you a new perspective, please like and subscribe for more eye-opening content like this. Share this with a friend or family to spread awareness, and see you in the next video.